Let's go off to the Western Cape next for an update on the taxi strike situation in Cape Town. We cross now live to our reporter, Atula Joka, and video journalist, uh, Lukanyo Mazantana. Uh, good morning. Thank you so much for making time for us, Atula. So, um, Asantako yesterday saying that the strike will continue indefinitely. They also indicated that they'll be going to court for an urgent interdict against the city. And now the city is saying that they are calling them to the negotiation table. Do we know whether Santaqua has confirmed if they will be attending that meeting? Yes, indeed, uh, Aldrin. High-level meetings are undergoing right now with the Provincial Mobility Department, with the Premier of the Western Cape, as well as Santaco. I understand Minister Sintuwa Chikunga is also still around. They are still deliberating to see if they are able to find each other. Santaco said they were left with no choice but to lodge that urgent court interdict, which will call for the release of the impounded vehicles and also to interdict the city of Cape Town and the provincial government not to interdict more of their vehicles. So we'll see what will come out of that. It's, it's been difficult to get some of the officials to speak on camera as they're still busy, locked up in those meetings. But this strike has had ripple effects on different sectors uh, of the economy. The economic activities has been severely uh, affected uh, in the Western Cape, Aldrin. Different sectors have been affected. Uh, last week, we, um, Tuesday, just before the public holiday, we spoke to the health department. They told us that they had to close about 10 uh, healthcare facilities due to vandalism of the infrastructure and also the fact that ambulance services are unable to go to the townships and several clinics as well around the, 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 the urban city have also been closed. Uh, the, C the Department of Education also released a statement yesterday to say over 850,000 people have not been able to go to school. We understand that the Western Cape is only uh, is just about over a million uh, pupils who are going to school. So it, it tells you that that's more than 90% of the school pupils that, which are not going to school and over 17,000 staff members of the Department of Education have also not been able to go to school. Businesses have also been affected as most of the commuters who use transport at Aldrin are not able to come to work. Uh, I'm visiting one of the businesses in town which is usually a hive of activity around this time but as you can see it is eerily quiet. It is in town. Town is safe but um, as you can see um, there's no much uh, business activity which is happening. I will try and bring in Dorothy Elvis who is the owner of the salon to talk to us about the impact of uh, this particular strike on businesses. It's, it's very bad. It's affecting, it affected town very badly because people can't come into town to work and today I've got my full staff back. But as it is, even with my staff, we're not doing anything because I think most people opted to work from home because they're given that option but it's affected everybody. Most of the shops in town are basically closed because there's no work and the staff couldn't get to work. So it's, it's affecting everybody. We've all been affected. What were some of the reasons that were given by the staff not to be able to come? The buses, the scared to catch buses, the taxis weren't available. The trains weren't available either from the townships into town and from any surrounding areas. And that's the reason they opted to stay at home. Take leave or seek pay, whatever they can afford to take. For someone who doesn't know your business, to talk to us about what do you do and normally on a normal day-to-day -day basis, how would you be um, operating now and also just draw the contrast, the difference now? We are hairdressing business, we're in a CBD. We normally start working about 7 in the morning and we get lots of ladies coming in before work, having the washes and the blow dries. And this morning, oh, it's been dead because they're not here to work to, to have the hair done. So that's affected us very badly in, the, in that form. I, I wonder why the clientele is not uh, coming because um, maybe most of them are still around town. They are around town, but they, most of them are not working. And that's the main reason why they're not coming to have their hair done. And also they're scared to walk around. They came to do their work. They're probably going to go home early because of traffic transports. And they're probably working half a day, so they can't sneak out and come and have their hair done. <laughs> and also, financially, this must also have an effect to you as an owner. Oh, yes, it does. It's, it's, it reminds me so much of COVID, when there was no one walking around and business was dead. This affected us badly. So there's no income. But you know, it's one thing, we've got to try and survive, because at the end of the month, the landlord doesn't give you excuses for not paying the rent. They must still be paid in full. And we just got to stretch as far as we can. What are you hoping for? I'm hoping that 
on next week everything is fine and everything will be back to normal and that um, everything will run smoothly and, this, and the negotiations all runs out smoothly and people can be able to go back to their lives as we used to be and carry on. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Dulce Elvis, who is the owner of this salon, saying they normally operate uh, from 8, 7 a.m. in the morning, but until now, there are no people, there's no activity which is taking place as this strike continues. He is saying, of course, some of her staff members uh, fear for their lives and also even her clientele is not coming through because they're also fearing for their lives as well. But um, this is um, the area which is a business center. Uh, Aldrin, I just want to show you... Um, even down there, some of the businesses are not in full operation. Um, I just want us to move a bit with my colleague to just show you um, the contrast around the town and the township. In town, it's business as usual. Um, in terms of safety, people are walking around, but the businesses are not um, active as they would like to be. Aldrin, this is a food shop. It is also closed. Uh, I'm going in around town. Now. Um, just people working on uh, going about their business but the businesses uh, as per se are not uh, actually open. I'll ask my colleague to just show you some of the businesses also around here. Um, normally these businesses will be open but as you can see it's locked. It's a food shop, cell phone shops, they are locked as well. People are walking around but the businesses are severely affected. Um, we spoke to the Economic Growth Department and they told us uh, that this has affected the, the economy of the Western Cape, but they are appealing to their tourists uh, not to be alarmed, to take precautions, to come and, and enjoy the tourism sector, which is uh, in, the, uh, in the city of Cape Town, which also gives you the contrasting uh, picture of the city of Cape Town, that one uh, part is, is safe and, and, and ready to do business, while others it is quite volatile and, and, and the tensions are high and it's very difficult to, to, to conduct businesses. We understand understand that supplies, essential services are unable to go to the townships. We understand that as well. Services are unable to go there, such as the reviews collection, and also the delivery of some essential services is unable to go to the township. Kukulia to a development forum was telling us that even bakeries are unable to go to the township due to what is happening uh, currently at the moment. Uh, but economic activities are affected all around uh, Aldrin. This speaks to us about the nature of the business, which are the taxes we know where they emanate from uh, from the times of uh, the apartheid regime to, during that special planning where most people were, were involved in forced removals after the implementation of that Group Areas Act uh, law which was uh, segregating people ac according to racial lines where people of color were put in different encampments in the townships, colored people, black people were put in different areas. That's when the taxi industry started as people had to ferry people, the labor force to, to towns to come and work but but over time, um, that business grew, and up until now, it has not been regulated. And it, I think it's remnants of that. Up until to this day, you find um, those um, operations and also those um, regulations uh, which have been bended around uh, are coming to the fore. The fact that the business has not been regulated uh, has, been, has become uh, the, the underpinning issue of what is happening now, because the city of Cape Town is also using uh, the, the laws to try and, and regulate the, the business and, uh, and, and, and also the taxi association is also um, um, the, the, they are concerned, they are arguing that uh, you, you cannot use um, the laws which are not in line with the National Land Traffic Act to regulate this kind of business. So you, you find those dynamics uh, Aldrin playing out. Uh, we see a lot of dynamics emanating from this taxi strike.